Hello everyone, uh, this is uh, Khaled Bahieldin and uh, I'm, uh, I'll show you here the uh, latest uh, STM32 on-step uh, telescope controller. Um, so it all fits on one uh, breadboard, the, the large one, um, except for the power supply which is the, this piece here. Now this one is not the final one that, that I'll be using, actually I'll use a smaller one which is this one. Okay, so you can see that it's it's much smaller than uh, than this one, but because uh, the, the one that's already hooked up in there has uh, screw terminals, uh, so it's easier to work with while you're developing. But when, when uh, uh, this will, will be converted to a, a circuit board, um, the smaller one will be used. They are they are identical except for an LED here and the screw terminals, but this one is much smaller. So that's that's uh, as far as the power supply. The power supply will also be connected with one of these, which is the 2.1 uh, 5.5 millimeter barrel jack. Um, there are two styles, uh, different styles of these. Uh, there is the this one, which is a which can be mounted on a. The wall of a box that uh, that holds the project, and there is another one that uh, that has a through hole, which goes through the board. I'm waiting for the one that has that goes through the board, um, because it will be more secure. You can take the the board with the connector with it. Okay. The three main components of the um, of the project are the STM32 blue pill. Okay. Let me. Zoom in on that. Okay, so this is the STM32 blue pill, and as you can see, it has a, a connect USB connector which we will not be using, and I'll explain why. And then there is these boot zero and boot one. So boot zero is the one to this side. The boot one is the one to the next to the button. Okay, the one next to the button uh, is is never. Um, has its position changed, but to install the uh, on step, you have to switch this to, to like it is here. So it has to go the uh, uh, connect those the the two pins on the left here, so the left and center rather than the right and center, which is the running mode. Um, there are two extra pins in here that are not used. So the, these are spares you can use for for anything, and there are a couple of of, of other spares that are uh, described in the. Uh, uh, the pin map. Um, there is a page that uh, describes the whole build in detail, part by part, and, and links to where you can get the the components. The other crucial part is this, which is the uh, it's a CP two one zero two micro USB connector, and it comes with the pins right at right angle so it will be it will it will uh, the way it is it is done it is connected is like that so it's it's vertical not horizontal now this is okay for testing but it's not okay for the final build so you have to bend the pins like that so that it will sit this way in the board and the the USB connector will be on the side, not not on the top like that. So this is required, even though the the board has a USB connector. The reasons are many. One is that uh, the resistors in the um, on the STM32 are not correct. That's one reason. The other reason is to protect against uh, burning the, the the board. I've already burned one because if you connect both the uh, 12 volt power and the USB, then uh, you will you will create a, a short and and what will happen is that the uh, you will burn the, the the main the main board of the of your project. So this is this design is is to protect you against this. So the the 3.3 volt pin here will never be connected to anything. Okay, you see that 3.3 volt at the on the right. Okay, the, the third crucial component, which without it. On step will not run is this module, which is a 
it's actually an RTC uh, board so it's a real-time clock but then it also has this small chip here which is an EEPROM chip um, it is the interface is I to C so there is an SCL and SDA pins that you need to connect same thing this is actually upright so it goes it goes vertical like this if you see if you can if you can focus it here yeah so you see it here it, it sits upright like that but for again for the final build you take the pins and bend them like that so you take the pins and you bend them so that they are like that and then it sits in the board like this with the battery accessible from the top okay and the pin map takes that into account so it has the pins going that way the correct way for that uh, for this component and then there is also the ESP01 which you can see it's sitting here at the end of the board okay so the ESP01 is an uh, ESP8266 uh, Wi-Fi um, module and then underneath it so it comes in like that and you can you can use it like that but it's inconvenient to to flash it and program it if you don't have a way to to uh, to connect it so what i do is I, I i bought these cheap adapters and what they do is that they connect it to a breadboard so it can be connected to a breadboard or to a um, um a printed circuit board and that would be the and it's all labeled and you have to uh, program it with uh, certain pins jumpers a certain way so CHPD has to be connected to the VCC and uh, GPIO0 has to be connected to ground otherwise you won't be able to program it okay then uh, okay so let's power it up and see what uh, what happens here So, uh, as you can see, this is the power the power uh, module. It converts um, uh, 12 volt to 3.3 volt. Everything on this board runs on 3.3 volt. And then, once you connect it, then things light up. Uh, in order for the board to be in run mode, the the jumpers here have to be on the same side, which is which is to the to the USB connector side. And you notice that because we're, we have this this USB connector, okay, for the reasons I've I've uh, explained, there is no need for this USB connector. So that's why I, I was able to cram it and, and fit more components like like this LV um, eight seven two nine in there. There is no uh, we don't need this the, the onboard USB. Okay, so let us uh, pull the. So we'll 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 go to the the PC, and then we'll uh, we'll connect the we'll connect the USB to the to the laptop. Okay, and we go in here. Okay, and then so this is K Stars uh, with Indy and with Egos, and basically K Stars is just uh, yet another planetarium software. But it has, uh, it happens to have a, a very good uh, um, astrophotography integrated uh, package. So that's why I use it. it. Also runs on Linux and Windows and Mac. I use it on Linux. So I just start in the here, and we'll go to the LX two thousand, and we see that it, it did connect. And I can do a start to start alignment, which is this one. I'll just uh, say. I want to align on one star okay and while we're doing this you can see that the USB is flashing every second which is basically the the indie driver is pulling the the, the on step controller to to see what the status where it's pointing and whether it's moving or not etc okay so let's do the, the alignment thing so I'll select one star and once I select that on step goes into tracking mode so you can see that the LED is flashing and if you notice it here then this is the right ascension motor it will start moving but it's very slowly because of the, the gear ratio okay you can see it moving slowly okay this way okay clockwise okay so 
uh, let us tell uh, on uh, let's tell k stars that I want to say uh, a line on Capella. Okay, so I'll just say slew. So I just say slew here, and once I do that, you see the mo motors are moving. The red, the green light here is solid, meaning that the telescope is slowing; it's not tracking. see the, the pointer going until it reaches the destination and then the buzzer beeps okay and now one step goes into tracking again you see the light flashing again okay I could do use the so now that I that I did this I could center the, the star in uh, I would center the star in, in, in the finder and then say align now alignment would be done um, in a better way with the or, or easier way uh, without a laptop rather so you can do it from an Android device so your phone or a tablet okay and then now that we're aligned we can you know move it to let us say Venus Once the, four, the, the scope reaches the destination, the motors will stop, and then the green light here will start flashing, and then the buzzer, the buzzer also beeps. Okay. The same thing can be can be done using the Wi-Fi. So I'll I'll show you that next. Okay. So now I'm on the tablet. I uh, what I did is I connected to OnStep. So. As you can see here, I connected to the network called OnStep, and then I'll fire up the controller. Okay. So I don't need to do the initialize because we we have already uh, initialized. So what I can do is I can say go to Messier, and uh, let us say. in cancer okay okay so if I do that I click go to and you can see that the same thing happens exactly like doing it from the from the laptop once it reaches the destination it's the same thing and then it tells you here that uh, you could you could unlock and sync. You see the, the 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 unlock here. You can change the speed. Okay, and you can you can go to any of these objects: the solar system, Messier, NGC, Herschel, or the bright stars. Like for example, if you go to the bright stars, you can see all the stars. Uh, uh, the ones that are brighter than let's say magnitude five or so or six okay um, there are also some options here to change things like um, site selection so basically you can select uh, a couple of locations the go to speed so in in, in my case I'm using 1.9 degrees per second uh, this has not been mounted on a, on a real mount yet the motors have not been tested on a real mount but you could go faster you could go default you could go slower there are also the horizon limits, so um, you could point t 10, degree, 10 degrees below the horizon, and the overhead is 80 uh, 
meridian limit is 8 so it's if it goes past the meridian by 8 8 minutes which is around 30 minutes so 8 8 degrees which is uh, which is around 30 minutes then uh, it will it will uh, issue a warning there uh, there are other other things here like uh, bluetooth if you if you're using that i'm not backlash compensation uh, again once i mounted there would be some backlash because of the the gears um, okay so uh, the the good thing about about this is that it it only cost it costs less than 15 dollars to for the electronic part uh, to build the the stm32 controller uh, so far it has been tested um, everything works we have not tested the st4 port or the focuser okay uh, so if you're building this then uh, let us know um, uh, you know uh, the testing so that we can we can you know change the pin names to be the focuser and and all that and uh, that's all i have to say for today and go ahead and build the telescope controller for less than 15 dollars Thanks.